Tell you what, give Dinkins some track shoes because fans, he just took off and blew by two Brook Point defenders to score that touchdown. There's the snap, the hole, the kick is up and through the uprights. 2.16 to go in the ball game. The Culpeper County Blue Devils are now winning 14 to seven over the Brook Point Blackhawks. No doubt about it, with game nine over Brook Point, we were definitely looking state material. Game 10 saw us travel up the Falk here. Somehow now that they got pushed back to about their one yard line when they were at the six, a so little bit of spotty spot in there. Handoff straight up the middle. Not much room there as the Falcons pile on. No, end around. Crop still on his feet. He's loose. He's at a 30. He's down to the 40. One man giving chase. One man to block. And Crop looks like he's running out of steam. He's trying to make that end zone, but Ryan back's there to block for him. Blue Devil touchdown. We'll have to see the highlight on that one, Brooks, because I don't know what happened. <laughs> well, I tell you, that is 98 yards. And, Brian, we were just saying half the distance to the goal line from the six would put the ball on the three. And it was on about the one, maybe one and a half. But that just makes it longer for Crop and Ryan back on the convoy. What a tremendous play. You got to play and tackle right to lay, blow the whistle. And apparently that didn't happen. He came out of the stack, popped around the left end. Cover but had four plays. We had flags on three. We had fumble on another one. But I guess that was just the magic play we're looking for. Brian, just pull out that 98 and a half yard run. That'll do it every time. First down and 10 for the Blue Devils at the Falcon 35. Jenkins back to pass for the first time tonight. Looking to the near side. He's got Dinkins with a step. He's got the ball into the end zone. Touchdown, Blue Devils. Oh, that was sweet from the 35-yard line. First pass of the ball game by Jenkins. Devils effective on the run. Devils just picked up their first first down of the ball game. Now they have their second touchdown. So 35-yard touchdown pass. And for Turns Dinkins, that gives him 11 TD receptions this year, along with 11 that he had last year. For Michael Jenkins, he goes up to his 22nd touchdown pass this year. Third and goal for the Blue Devils at the six-yard line now. Jenkins pitches the ball to Jones on the right side, fakes the reverse. Jones still has the ball, tries to fight for the end zone, makes breaks, a couple tackles, and he's in for a Blue Devil touchdown. Well, I tell you, if the, uh, the play wasn't the thing, the player was the thing that time, and Brandon Jones, the superior athletic ability, cut it back up inside and bounced off a couple men, and that's his 11th rushing touchdown of the season for Brandon Jones. Of course, turns Dinkins now with... Uh, 10 TD receptions, and Jones about to catch up on the ground. So the score amounts to 20 to 7. Got real quiet on the Falcon side of the field all of a sudden. Here's Greenaway on for the extra point. After a Blue Devil timeout, it's second down and seven for the Blue Devils. Jenkins looks over the defense. 134 to go till halftime. Nobody in the backfield, and Jenkins back to pass. He throws it over the middle. Caught, juggled a little bit, but touchdown Blue Devils, Ryan back. Oh, I love it. I like those wide open formations. They had Cagle and Dinkins to the top of the field. They put Jones in motion to the bottom. Falkier didn't know which way to turn, so he passes into the end zone for Ryan Back. That's his fifth touchdown reception of the year. He's also scored on that fumble return we talked about. Sure enough, the Devils get it up to 27 to 7, and the pack stands on the far side, all whooping it up for the Devils. Greenaway on to add the extra point. Jenkins with the snap, Orange with the hold, and Greenaway with the kick through the uprights. One twenty-nine to go until halftime. The Blue Devils have taken a three-touchdown lead, 28-7 over the Falkier Falcons. Blue Devils looking to go for the 33-yard field goal attempt is Greenaway. There's snap, good one, good hold. Good kick by Greenaway. Can see if it has the distance, and he does. Good field goal by Mike Greenaway. And Culpepper with 6.27 to go in the third quarter, lead it 31-7 as Mike Greenaway scores on his third of four field goal attempts this year. First and 10 for the Falcons at their own 20-yard line. 6.27 to go in the third quarter. Fake handoff, blitz by Robinson, just gets it away to start. Intercepted on the play by Gaskins into the end zone for a touchdown. Well, and I tell you, the uh, the Devils got away with one that time on the run back because Curtis Robinson blocking the back, but the officials can't catch everything. And for Gaskins, that's his first touchdown for the Devils this year. The Devils have um, touchdown passes to six different players. They have six rushers that have scored touchdowns, and now they have six return touchdowns. How's that for balance all the way around there? 
And uh, Devils get the score up to 37 to seven. Greenaway on there at the extra point. Falcons show the blitz. Rogers looks over the defense and it's a handoff the deal around the right side, looking for the end zone. Met, he's into the end zone for a touchdown, Blue Devils. Not to be denied that time, he goes in from six yards out and across the way, the Blue Devil fans with the air horn celebrating, score amounts to 44 to seven. Craig Rogers came in at quarterback and got the handoff out of Deal. Deal gets it into the end zone and Greenaway on to add the extra point. And for Addison Deal, that's his second rushing touchdown of the season. Way to go Devils. It was a perfect season and a perfect year. The Culpeper Blue Devils, 10 and 0. Now it's on to the championship games. Thanks for catching that Culpepper feeling with it's interesting. The first playoff. Third and five for the Hilltoppers as the Blue Devil defense faces another big challenge here. Needs to, need to stop him here. Back to pass is Campbell. Trying to get up the middle is Lambert. Gets rid of the ball. Intercepted by Stephen Barber at the 40. He crosses midfield. Still on his feet. He's gone. It looks like one man to beat. Tries to cut it towards the end zone. Holds the hand up. And he's in. I don't see any flags. Touchdown, Blue Devils. Well, you know, it only takes one play, and you can make it on offense, and you can make it on defense. And that time, as you watch your replay, let's give all the credit there to Jeremy Bailey because Lambert tried to come up the middle. They had a little cross going on there. And finally, from the outside, here came Bailey, and he nailed the quarterback. The ball was underthrown there. It was not completed. And Barber takes off with it down the sideline, about the 10-yard line. He thinks he's got it. He holds his hand up in the air. And it's six for the Devils. Greenaway on dead to extra point. Greenaway will be on to attempt a field goal here in just a moment. It's a 7-7 ball game. It's 4.53 to go before halftime. It's Greenaway on for a 27-yard field goal attempt. There's a snap. Good snap. Good hold by Orange. And the kick is up. It's high enough. And through the uprights for the Blue Devils' first offensive points of the night. 49 to go in the first half of play. The Blue Devils now lead the football game 10 to 7 over the EC Glass Hilltoppers. Two wide outs to the near side for Glass as Campbell takes the snap. Fake handoff up the middle. The quarterback still has the ball and pitch back right out. Intercepted by Ryan Back. He holds on to it. Balls ahead for the end zone. It's a touchdown, Blue Devils. What a play, Blue Devils defense. Oh, I tell you, pressure by the Devils, and I believe it's a penalty up on the far side of the field. Probably going to be a holding. Could be a face mask as back broke away, but I hope this play stands up here uh, for Ryan Back because he has five TD receptions. He has one fumble return for a touchdown this year. But let's see what happens uh, on this play here. But uh, super defense there. I think the Devils clearly had the, the ball. They had holding on this side as the Devils uh, rushed. They passed at the far side of the field. Back was able to grab a hold of it and let's see what the officials come up with here super play though but back he was in position was all over that could have been a face mask after he took off of the ball we'll see the blue devils lose the touchdown but they still have the football it's first down and 10 at the 25 yard line of the ec glass 152 to go before halftime jenkins back to pass steep drop pass over the middle there's a flag on the play kegel has the ball in the end zone and i think i saw a flag fly we're gonna have to wait and see flag was against the EC Glass Hilltoppers, so it's a Blue Devil touchdown. The Sorrentino Steamroller takes one game at a time. Here's the second playoff against William Fleming. Second and ten for the Blue Devils. 119 to go in the first half. Jenkins back to pass again. Jones in on the block. Zipped over the middle. Completed the Daniel winning. Touchdown, Blue Devils. I'll tell you, Mike Jenkins, he throws a couple of those passes, and you really wonder uh, how that ball is going. But that time, uh, he threw it with all the confidence in the world. He stepped back, and he zipped that ball, hit winning on a line, going across on the slant there. And they tried to pass to him on the sideline. Just did not look good. The pattern was slow just a minute ago and said, oh, that's not working for the Devils at all. But, man, come back that time, and that was a pro move. He lined that ball in. Of course, winning bounces off the QB, uh, the cornerback, and goes right into the end zone. So a 114 to go now. The Devils close to eight to six. <laughs> 
Trail them by two. The Blue Devils are going for the two-point extra PAT attempt. Jenkins back to pass. Lobbed out wide open. Brandon Lambert. Brooks, we have a tie game. I tell you, it's nice to see Lambert in that end zone. Brings back a lot of good luck and a good feeling for the Devils because when they were down and everybody in the press box thought they were out in the very first game of the season at Woodbridge, that great screen pass to Lambert got him on a roll. It's first and 10 for the Blue Devils at 26. Quarterback keeper by Jenkins. He's got some room. He's off for the end zone. Touchdown, Blue Devils. Now, I tell you, that will be in the highlight film, and I was at the banquet last year when they showed that highlight film, and John Hallett and Brian Wolf remembered very well because last year, Dana Monticello had a quarterback sneak, and uh, Mike Jenkins broke through and ran and ran and ran downfield, and they tackled him from behind, and he jumped up and called timeouts. We're watching that highlight film last year, and uh, everybody in the cafeteria that night was having great fun at Mike's expense because he jumped up and called timeout. They said he was winded. Well, let me tell you, he wasn't winded at that time and a great call out on offense they saw something his greenway on dead the extra point third and goal and as brooks just told me we're about two feet short of that end zone let's see what the play call is jenkins off the right tackle he should be in there yes he is blue devil touchdown no way they're gonna stop him the two touchdowns to get the devils away from the eight all tie here as we started the second half both of them belong to mike jenkins and that senior leadership that we've seen now. and i tell you the running star of the game for the devils holy cow Devils with a great drive at time started on the 42 and they just hammered hammered away great run by crop to get them close and Jenkins takes it the last two feet. Let's see what the play call is this time. Is it Jenkins? Yes, it is straight up the middle. Oh, what a block by winning. But Mike Jenkins is in for the touchdown. The second one yard uh, touchdown run there for Mike Jenkins. And of course, he had that tremendous play that broke the tie there, the 26 yard touchdown run. This one will get the job done, and the score mounts to 28 to 8, and Greenaway on dead to extra points, and the Blue Devils are dreaming and looking ahead to Hampton. We'll have Peg's playoff cookies next week, and we'll have to have crab cakes to go with them, Brian. We went on to defeat William Fleming 29 to 8. As the road to Richmond continued, it got tougher and tougher. Many folks in the stands felt that this was really the state championship. These were the two best teams in the state, the Devils and Hampton. Dinkins recovered that fumble. It's third and three. Now third and goal from the three. Quick handoff up. No, we're all here on the side. Reception. Touchdown, Blue Devils. And a three-yard pass play. The Devils in the full house backfield that time, and they faked up the middle, went to the sideline. Daniel Winning got a touchdown on the mighty, mighty Hampton Crabbers. And more important, the Blue Devils drove the length of the field. They went 80 yards for that. pass play the Devils in the full house backfield that time and they faked up the middle went to the sideline Daniel winning got a touchdown on the mighty mighty Hampton Crabbers and more important the Blue Devils drove the length of the field they went 80 yards for their touchdown they picked up five, four first downs along the way and on the three yard touchdown pass to winning the Devils put it in the end zone here so with a little over five minutes to go winning uh, I'm sorry ran away on to add the all important extra point Hampton only had to go 50 yards for their touchdown, and the Blue Devils here, of course, went 80 yards for theirs. Their snap, the hole by Orange, and the kick by Greenaway is through the uprights. <laughs> With 5.08 to go in the first half of play, it's a brand new ball game. The Culpeper County Blue Devils have tied the Hampton Crabbers 7-7. Seven to seven. you what, Blue Devil fans, the Devil's offense is knocking on that door. Third and goal, right up the right tackle, busted into the end zone. Touchdown, Blue Devils, and the Blue Devils have the lead. And if I'm not mistaken, it's the first time this year that the Crabbers have been behind in a football game. And Blue Devils are their first opportunity here in the second half. They started on their own 31, one yard, short run, and then the pass, the tip drill there. Of course, the Dinkins got them to the three, then to the two. And then Brandon Jones from one foot away blasted into the end zone, and the Devils are ahead of mighty Hampton Crabbers. Here comes Greenaway on to attempt to add the 51st extra point of the year for Greenaway. There's the hold. The kick by Greenaway is through the uprights. 
With 7.24 to go in the third quarter play, the Culpeper County Blue Devils now lead this football game 14 to 10. And it's Greenaway on to attempt the tying field goal with 2.20 to go in the ball. And snaps. Good. The kick is up. And through the uprights, we have a tie football game. Of course, it ran cross country and gave that up to concentrate on football. Brian Wolf says, we'll give him a break for that, make his field goal, and it's through the uprights. The score at the end of regulation is 17 to 17 between the Hampton Crabbers and the Culpeper County Blue Devils. First and 10 for the Blue Devils. First and goal, first crack in overtime. Back to pass is Jenkins, deep over the middle, and the ball is tapped incomplete. Second and goal, same formation as before. Jenkins back to pass, looking into the end zone. Guns it in there, and incomplete. Third and goal for the Blue Devils now. Two straight incompletions. Let's see what they do. Jenkins back to pass, deep drop, over the middle. Bat it down. It's going to be fourth down. Comes a field goal attempt by Mike Greenway on fourth down in overtime. Let's see if he can get it done. There's a the snap to hold. The kick is up. And through the uprights, once again, Mike Greenaway is good. It is now Crabber's ball, first and goal at the 10-yard line. Let's see what the Blue Devil defense can do here to hold him. Quarterback with the ball. He flat flag on the play as he stopped for a loss. First and goal for the Crabbers after a face mask penalty against the Blue Devils. There's the snap, the handoff right up the middle to Jones. He pushes the pile. He's not making the end zone, but it's going to be second and goal. Second and goal for the Crabbers after the timeout from the Blue Devil three-yard line as we await the snap. There's a snap, high one, it's the quarterback with the ball, Hagan. He's going nowhere, the Blue Devils have grabbed a hold and pushed him back for a loss on the play. Great Blue Devil defense. And that was winning, it brought him down, and the Blue Devils, they're celebrating because there's a, some type of penalty after the play here, and it's against Hampton, looks like unsportsmanlike conduct. We've got it figured out, Blue Devil fans. It's third down and 20. Crabbers are looking to get in that end zone to win the ball game, the Blue Devils don't want them to do it. Looking deep over the middle, he's got the corner. The ball's dropped, it's fourth down and 20. Fourth and 20 for the Crabbers. Brian Smith's on to attempt a 37-yard field goal attempt to tie this game. He misses it, and the ball game's over, and the Blue Devils win. There's the blitz, the kick is up. It's wide left, it's wide left. The Blue Devils have won, the Blue Devils have won. And what a game it was. In overtime, Hampton lost. The Blue Devils won 20 to seven. But one more game. After that offsides penalty, it's first and goal for the Blue Devils. 7.23 to go in the first quarter. Jenkins back to pass. Play action open over the sideline is the reception. In for a Blue Devil touchdown. Daniel winning. Oh, just the way they drew it up. You had to be impressed with the Devils there. They took that opening kickoff from the own 26. They marched down the field. They took advantage of one offside penalty down third down. They only passed the ball one time until that final pass for 10, for 10 yards to Daniel Winning. And the Devils take about five minutes off the clock here. Four minutes in, 43 seconds. They used 10 plays. They picked up four first downs. Daniel Winning takes it in on a 10-yard touchdown from Mike Jenkins and on to Ed Dexter points Greenaway. There's the hold. The kick by Greenaway is through the uprights. It looks like the... 7-17 to go in the first quarter play. The Blue Devils strike first and lead the football game 7-0 over the Henrico Warriors. Second and four for the Blue Devils. Turn and clock down to 30 seconds to go in the half. See what they do on offense here. Jenkins with a keeper straight up the middle. Touchdown, Blue Devils. Oh, I tell you, let's ring that cowbell and let's let the Devil fans hear it on the far side of the field. The air horns are going off. Pandemonium. The Blue Devils surge ahead now to a 13-6 lead, and Greenaway on to add the extra point there. What a drive for the Devils. They started on their own 37. They took 11 plays to take it to pay dirt, and they used up more of that uh, five and a half minutes. They're only going to leave 25 seconds for Henrico to do something. Let's see if Greenaway can tack on point number 14. There's a snap. The hold by Orange. Good hold. And kicks through the uprights by Mike Greenaway. 25 seconds to go until halftime. The Blue Devils now lead the football game 14 to 6 over the Henrico Warriors. Second and goal for the Blue Devils at the four yard line. 4.30 turn and clock, third quarter. Jenkins back pass, has winning open to the far sideline, racing for the pylon. Touchdown, Blue Devils. 
Eruption on the far side of the field. The Devils fans have got what they come to get. And look at that, folks. That shot that Al Gage has got right there as he goes down through the stands. I mean, that looks like a college crowd. You wouldn't know. You might be at the Redskins Stadium. The Devils are whooping it up. All the signs and all the banners. The Devils start on their own 37. They take seven plays to take it to pay dirt. A little flip pass there for winning. He scored early on a 10-yard touchdown reception, this time from four yards out. And the Devil lead mounts now. Greenaway on to try to add the 21st point. It's down, it's up, and it is good. And the Blue Devils lead it 21 to 6. With 4.24 to go in the third quarter of play, the Culpeper County Blue Devils now lead the football game 21 to 6 over the Henrico Warriors. This clock continues to tick down. 20 seconds now as the clock winds down, and the Henrico Warriors, they will game, but the Blue Devils are just too much for them. Mixed play calling here, running and passing, strong defense. The cheers continue. Mike Jenkins takes the last knee here. And that's the last play of the millennium for the Blue Devils. They do it all. They get to 14-0. We showed you in the pregame here. We showed you all of the sheets. When we started this season here in this little old clipboard, there were only 14 pages left. A new 10 would be enough for the regular season. We had four more, and the 13th one was a tremendous victory at Hampton. We challenged the kids all this week. Lou Sorrentino in the locker room and right there in the classroom. We said, do you want to be remembered at the 10-year and the 25-year reunion as a team that beat Hampton? Do you want to be remembered as the team that beat Hampton and then won the state championship? And the Blue Devils came here today, and they got it all done, 21 to 12, and just pandemonium in the middle of field. And we're going to show it all to you today. Al Gage has got the shot there. And look at that crowd on the far side of the field. You'd think you were at the Rose Bowl to see the Blue Devil fans there. And here they go. They're going to shake hands with the mighty game in Rico Warriors. Some great folks at Henrico, one of my favorite uh, friends in uh, college, right across the hall there was a civil engineer from Henrico, Randy Guill. Could not make connections with him this week. Randy Guill is here, and his team does not defeat the Blue Devils. Nothing to be sorry for in Rico. Uh, they end the season with only two losses. They lose to Verona. They lose to Culpepper. Verona may very well win the Division VI championship right here on this field with the game starting at 4 o'clock, and that's about uh, 25, 35 minutes away here uh, today. And they are the Blue Devils, too. So Brian Wolf and I are going to stay here and root for the Blue Devils in the uh, second game. But the first game goes to the Culpepper Blue Devils, and yesterday at that pep rally, Lou Sorrentino did the cheer at the very end of the pep rally. They always do. Who are we? And the Blue Devil football team stood up in the, in the stands and yelled, Blue Devils, who are we? Blue Devils. And there they are. Go fight win. You see the sign there at the little portal to the stands. Pick out your favorite uh, Blue Devil fans because the entire Culpepper is here today. Now here, look at that crowd shot, Brian. There they go. Blue Devils, Blue Devils, Blue Devils. And everybody in town... Hi, and hello again, everybody. Welcome to the Washington Post High School Sports Show. My name is Chick Hernandez, and this week marks a transition for us. The final football games are being played while winter sports are just getting started. When we last met, it was championship weekend for football in Maryland and D.C. This week, it's Virginia's turn. Mark Thomas wraps up the football season and unwraps basketball as only he can with his dribble. At the University of Richmond, over 10,000 fans showed up to see the Culpeper Blue Devils against Enrico. First quarter, Devils in the blue dress. Mike Jenkins finds Daniel winning. He puts Culpeper up 7-0. Less than three minutes later, Enrico responds on a fourth and five from the 25. Forget first down, we're talking touchdown. Aaron Alexander to Prince Al Brockenborough for the score. Culpeper's lead was trimmed to 7-6. Then the Blue Devils give new meaning to the term zinc pass. Mike Jenkins and Terrence Dickens hook up not once for a first down, but twice for a first down. And then on the second and 18, Jenkins, I said Jenkins, hits Dickens again. That set up a first down, and the Culpepper combo was in full effect. A moments later, Jenkins becomes a do-it-yourselfer. The 12th play, 63-yard drive, made it 14-6 Culpepper. They that went into the third quarter when Culpepper and Brandon Jones went back to work. 23 yards into Henrico territory. They kept mixing up the plays. Michael Jenkins fires a laser that tipped, but it had so much smoke on it, it got through to Dinkins. 
20-yard gain and a first down. And that set up what we'll call the winning touchdown. Daniel Winning worked his way back across the field, and he puts Culpepper in command at 21-6. The fans were getting ready to start the celebration. And Ryko wasn't. Aaron Alexander to Mike Handsome, and Handsome indeed. Nice effort, but it was too little, too late. They couldn't mount much more, and Culpepper did the honors. That set off a celebration in the stands. And ladies and gentlemen, Paul Pepper is your 1999 AAA Division V state champion with a 21-12 win over Henrico. I'm not shocked. I, you know, I'm, I believe in hard work, good things can happen. I knew we had good players, and, and, and you know, we've gotten better and better each year. What, the biggest thing is we got confidence, and we're not scared of anybody. Coming in this week, you know, everyone was talking about how we beat Hampton. And on Wednesday, Coach told us we couldn't talk about Hampton anymore. He wanted us to fo focus on him right though. I think that was the best thing he could have did. Let me ask you about these hands, man. These hands right here. What do you got on these things? Because, man, everything sticks to them. I don't know. God gave them good for my dad. My mom and dad gave them to me. I just worked what I got. I knew, we had, I knew we had a good team coming in the season. I didn't know it was going to be this good, but I'm glad it was. <laughs> <laughs> In Harrisonburg, Virginia at James Madison University, Virginia AA Division IV State Championship. Unbeaten part.